Okay, well, I thought I would make another update video on the Toyota pickup for anyone who's still following along. Um, and also, this video is, I wanted to kind of specifically show the NRG Quick Detached Steering Wheel that I just put on the other day. So I'll comment on that in a second. As far as the pickup truck, it's getting close. Working on my push bar project down there. Currently, you can see it's my front push bar is made out of cardboard. And I am in the process of rewiring some relays for the electric uh, radiator fan. Uh, I just finished redoing the entire uh, ECU wiring harness and put the put everything back in here. That came out real nice. I only had to do it four times, <laughs> so that's good. Um, I used some high heat. Uh, uh, sheathing that I got off McMaster car. I'll put the link for anyone who's interested. This is really great stuff. The first time I did the wiring harness, I used some um, ceramic stuff that left little ceramic fiberglass fibers all over the place. I had to take the harness back off, redo the whole thing, cut it apart, redo it. Ended up settling on this stuff here. Really great product. It's like a rubberized uh, high heat. You can actually hold a blowtorch practically right on this. Um, you, you might be interested to see here, I relocated some of these VSV switching valves. Uh, this is the EGR, uh, exhaust, exhaust Gas Recirculation 1, and then I'm running the vacuum lines up to this little fitting here. Kind of take them, you know, take them off the top of the motor over there. And then this is the air suction um, VSV, and then it goes to the little air injection system down there. I did away with the uh, fuel pressure uh, VSV and I'm just going to run a vacuum hose directly from this to the kind of the little pressure regulator thing on the end of the fuel rail. But you can kind of see down in there I, I did a nice job running the uh, wiring harness, um, the new fuel injectors, let's see what else we got going here. Um, oh, I'm starting to put some of the coolant hoses on. You see some of these uh, Michelor W5 all uh, stainless clamps is kind of how I'm going. I, uh, I also, on the uh, 140 amp alternator, I redid the wiring harness. You can see it kind of goes down around there with some larger wires. And then I integrated in a uh, circuit breaker. So this one's 135 amps for the main charging lead. And you can see kind of I'm in the process of snaking the um, the wiring harness stuff that I'm, I'm working on here. And then the, when I'm all done, I'll package that back up. And then it comes over here to the, you know, to the fuse box. And I'm in the process of adding an extra relay down there. I got to wire the leads in for that. Um, so I'm, I'm in the process of that. That's going to be for the to handle the driving lights. And then you can see my small fan came with a relay. So I have it here. And I've got it kind of integrated it in. And then you can kind of maybe see down here some of the wiring I did for the main leads into the, the ground as well as the uh, the main power lead for the starter cable and, and what have you. And then there's a kind of a sub uh, circuit breaker that I'm wiring in down here which uh, handles the power supply uh, to the spall fan. So, and then uh, of course the spall fan taps into this uh, temperature switch here and then I'm, I'm gonna wire in kind of a manual override. So you can kind of see the state of things. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. Another, a couple other uh, noteworthy things. I made my own custom evap can here. I kind of cut the top of the stock uh, can uh, that came on the truck out and then I bought this. This is actually like a, a weed stash container. Uh, what I did was I just, I cut it and very carefully machined and drilled it and stuff. And, and I took the original charcoal uh, out of the the Toyota canister and then I, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that trick where you take the charcoal and you actually put it in a bowl and then you heat it up with a blowtorch and it catches off and it burns off all the 
all the f accumulated fumes from over the years and then you can kind of actually reactivate the charcoal so i did that number uh, there's a couple of videos on the internet that show how you how you do that um and so i did that and then i i just put the charcoal back in and then you can see here i i painted the booster and i put on a new master that i got from lc engineering um an an, an asin or ison uh master cylinder and then uh, put on a new master cylinder for the clutch and also working on of course the big brake upgrade the four wheel disc brakes in the back here I'm done got everything buttoned up and I had to kind of get rid of that little crazy load uh, sensing proportioning valve and I just used I painted the bracket and kind of uh, welded on a little bracket there and use that to just run the lead directly down to the, the factory fitting so that worked out pretty nice and then you can see my I, I custom uh, laser cut some brackets that I designed in Fusion 360 so you can kind of see those back there so that that's going pretty well on the on the rear brakes on the front brakes they're coming along i'm not quite done I'm, I'm still routing the brake lines um here let me show you i found some real cool little deals here and then these are the brake lines down here but you, you can kind of see how things are starting to shape up there so it's looking good i uh, found these little interesting pieces online if anyone's interested, I could put a, a link. But these allow you to wire tie around the brake lines, and then you can kind of bend these to, you know, how you want to hold the actual uh, brake line. So I, I've got some Willwood brake lines, and then I shrunk wrap some uh, uh, sheathing over it. I'll, I'll make another video about those. If you... If you're curious about the brackets I made, let me see if I can kind of do this one-handed and uh, get the, the spindle to turn here a little bit one-handed. And I'll try to get the camera around. So you, you can kind of see these are my uh, custom adapters that I made in there. And uh, that allows me to to bolt up the Willwood deals here, put the hub and everything on. So I'm pretty happy with how that's coming out. And these are the 12.8, uh, I think it's 12.88 inch uh, diameter, which is plenty big enough for my little pickup truck. But you can kind of see how that that's turned out. So I'm happy with how that's going. But the main thing I wanted to show on the video was this kind of little recent upgrade I did uh, for the steering wheel. So this is the NRG Quick Release Hub. And I, I've got this paired with my little Nardi steering wheel that I might have shown in some of the other videos. Oh, and you see the transmission in the back end also, so that's kind of handy. So the way this works, if you're not familiar with it, is it kind of simulates, you know, what they do on race cars and, and stuff. You pull this collar back and the steering wheel comes off. So I had originally had like just a real, uh, like a little adapter from China that uh, bridged the gap between the Nardi pattern and uh, the, you know, the, the uh, steering column. Uh, splines the problem was it it kind of uh, while it was it was nice and and low profile uh, the the wire for the horn just kind of hung out there and also the little part that skims along this electrical contact when you turn the steering wheel was not designed real well so I was not real happy with how all that was working in regards to you know when you turn the steering wheel it causes the blinker to go back off and stuff that wasn't a very good design and I wasn't happy about how the horn wire was just hanging out there so I thought huh this is kind of I kind of like this idea because they have electrical contacts that disconnect 
So that tucks all the horn wiring in there. The only thing I wasn't crazy about was the adapter for the Toyota is a, is maybe about an inch you know higher overall than I would like it to be. But I, in the future, I may fix that by machining something or uh, turning something on my lathe. But for now, this will be okay. And what you can see it's polished. Here, I did that. I took a file and some, some sandpaper and I polished it. And the reason I did that, I didn't originally set out to do that. Originally, it had a nice anodized finish, but when I was working with this, before I mounted on the steering wheel, when I was working with this thing here, I was in the kitchen and I pulled the, I pulled the collar back to see how everything worked. And this, this part here that, bolt, that you see bolted on flew off on the kitchen counter and it dinged the edge. And I was like, God, son of a, you know, biscuit. And it dinged the edge. And I thought, oh, this, this, is, this is terrible. So I ended up having to just take a file and, and, and kind of take it down to get past that little dinky ding that went in. And I thought, oh, you know what might be cool is to just polish that out and, and uh, leave it raw. And I actually kind of like how that turned out. And then I use some little uh, Torex uh, screws to hold on. So real pleased with how that came out. I had to cut some of their wiring and redo it to make more clearance, but it turned out pretty nice. And I'm real pleased. This is the carbon fiber. Uh, you can kind of see in there. This is the carbon fiber collar. So I'm really thrilled with how that came out. And you can see, you just kind of try to get the camera right here. Pull, pull some tension off this and then put it back on and bang, goes right back on. And I've got my little horn there. Uh, I, I watched a lot of reviews on the eBay version of this collar, which is significantly cheaper. So this, this uh, adapter and this uh, quick release here ran me about 200 bucks on eBay. And from China, uh, they sell another version of this for like $23. And I, w I was almost about to give that a shot and see how it would, would work when I started watching some reviews on, on YouTube. And, I, I, and if you're interested in quick di disconnect wheels uh, hubs, I highly recommend that you watch those, those uh, reviews because they all say the same thing. They say that as soon as you put it on, it's cool and everything, but there's some compliance in there that kind of, you know, doesn't make you feel like you've got your steering wheel on securely. So I ended up paying... Uh, you know, significantly more for the the NRG hub. And I'm glad I did because this thing is really worth the money. It's really well made, really well machined. Um, it, and it really goes on and off with a positive engagement. And, and there's absolutely no play. And from what I can see, and any, any of you guys who subscribe to my channel know I'm a stickler for uh, the fine details. I couldn't see anything I didn't like about this. Now this is a safety kind of mechanism that they have it's a little pin that normally sticks up and you have to depress it as you pull the collar but uh i didn't really see a, much of a need for that there's a little allen screw you know in in the face of of this that you can undo and when you do be careful because this thing f pops out with a spring and flies across the room um but once you get the spring out you can just put this little piece right back in and screw the allen uh the set screw right back down and it holds it flush and it kind of is nice because it kind of gives you a little indexing mark i think the collar when you pull it back you can actually scoot it around which is nice because let me let me see if i can kind of show you what i mean you can actually kind of take some of the tension off of it a little bit not disengage the whole thing but you can kind of just move it around and orient it with the logos how you want it, which I, I was real pleased about because when I first put it on, I had the logos kind of facing not how I wanted them. But anyways, it's real nice. The only thing I'm a little sketched out about is it, it adds, because of this guy, it adds about, you know, uh, an inch or so of extra space. And so when you're driving, you're, you're a little bit further away from these, uh, you know, indicator and blinker and everything. Although it might actually be okay because it's, it's not too far and it gives you a little extra clearance. So I'm thinking it might be kind of cool. So one, that's the kind of main point of the thing was just to show the, the quick disconnect, how nice it came out. I'm real pleased with it. If you're in the market for one, I can highly recommend the 
the NRG. Um, and I'm not sponsored by these guys, nor did they give me a break on the price. I had to pay full going price. But it's just such a, a beautifully made piece of equipment. I felt it was necessary to put a, a little more in-depth review out there for anyone who's out there looking around. So, Okay, well, that is the latest on the pickup truck. Um, I've been putting the kind of the, the final touches on, on the motor. I'm going to hopefully be firing up pretty soon. I just ran... Oh, there, let me climb under here, and I'll try to show you the... I'll try to show you the, the the wiring for the oxygen sensor I did yesterday. So it's a little dark under here, but maybe you can kind of see. So here we are, transmission, all that. Um, I took this heat shield off, and I, I took some uh, silica mat and put some RTV sealant over it to rubberize it. And then you can see I riveted it all on. And I made, I kind of upgraded the heat shield and then here's the wiring harness. This is the reverse uh, switch. And then I, I tucked up the uh, leads for the oxygen sensors and put a little clamp right there. This is the little guy for the wideband AEM uh, gauge, uh, the, the air fuel ratio gauge. And then this is the forward uh, factory uh, Denso uh, oxygen sensor with this little harness here and then comes around wrapped it around here here's the connector put that little guy in there snaked it around the frame and then it it pops out over over here and this is the uh the n uh tk not not ngk but their their subsidiary in tk which uh makes it a little screw in oxygen sensor version so that's the one for back there. So got to get the signals going up to the ECU. So here, as you can see, everything's looking pretty good. And like I say, I, and then I guess in the last video, everybody saw the uh, stainless steel exhaust. I don't think there's anything else I've done since then. Oh, I guess maybe repainted the gas tank and put that guy in. So that's the latest. And I'm trying to wrap up all the loose ends. Oh, wait, actually, there is one more thing here. My girlfriend's got her stuff away, but check this out. I got a little, I wanted to have a little more uh, rear tail light, uh, or uh, sorry, reverse light light to, to light up uh, when I'm backing up the truck. I got one of these little lights, and I, I took a nibbler, and I cut out this area here and mounted that kind of very stealth back there. It's gonna sit right above the license plate. And you can kind of see how I've got it laid out back here. It's, it's that little uh, McTuning, not to be confused with McLovin, McTuning uh, 20 watt LED. Uh, they sell them all over eBay, pretty easy to find. And then I'm just gonna wire the leads into the normal kind of reverse lights. I was gonna wire another switch to run it independently but I, in the end, I decided that was too much work. And so I decided I'm just going to cut into the, the standard uh, reverse lights so that when I go into reverse, this uh, LED uh, lights up as well. So, all right. Well, that's the latest on the truck. Thanks for putting out with my kind of crazy all over the place videos. And uh, sooner than later, we will be firing this baby up. So if you want to hear what it sounds like with uh, LCE headers and Ray's custom stainless steel exhaust, stay tuned. And uh, as all the, all the kids like to say, smash that like button and subscribe if you want to uh, have any chance at all of seeing my next video. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching and uh, we'll have more to come.